The way forward, Jan Saldiva on Sunday amassed thousands of party supporters at the Civic in Belize City, where he officially launched his campaign to lead the ruling United Democratic Party. Saldiva's goal is to defeat opponent Patrick Faber on February 9th and ultimately become Prime Minister when Dean Barrow steps down in 2020. Let the event today be the clear and resonant voice of our United Democratic Party all the way to the next general elections. We can take back Belize City. We can take back Corozal Town. We can even take back Orange Rock Town from the current leader of the People's United Party. To continue to win, we must make plain our intentions to choose wisely for the Belizean people. We can continue to win with the right leadership. Leaders who build consensus. Leaders who bring people together like today. Team Saldivar is comprised of Hugo Pat and Beverly Williams, who are running for the post of first deputy leader and second deputy leader, respectively. Bamopan Mayor Khalid Belayal is seeking to replace Chairman Alberto Agas under Saldivar's banner. Attorney General Michael Perfit is also running for the post. This is not about any one person. This is about electing a team that will best represent the interests of the United Democratic Party. It is also about electing a team that is best able to govern this jewel of ours and continue the trajectory upon which our great leader has catapulted this nation. Ultimately, John has the support of the vast majority of his colleagues because we believe that he is the right man for the job. We believe, and I certainly believe, that he will, will get things done and get them done well. His economic background affords him the ability to make logical and appropriate decisions that will be in the best interest of all Belizeans. Those of you who have spent time around him have probably had occasion to see him sitting in a chair with one leg bouncing and a distant gaze on his face. No, the man never nervous, or as we say in a Creole, he never got chigas. I assure you that it was in these moments that he is deepest in thought, trying to peer around the next corner and plotting the way forward regarding the issue at hand. Exuding confidence, Saldiva reportedly enjoys the support of 22 UDP standard bearers and seven members of the central executive and city and town councillors. His supporters include Pablo Marin, Edmund Castro, Denny Grijalva, Erin Contreras, Rene Montero and Dr. Angel Campos, Philip Willoughby, John Agas, Sister B and Gaspar Vega, who has re-emerged and is seen as a crucial player in Saldiva's camp. Saldiva's confidence grew at the sight of Mesopotamia era representative Michael Finnegan, who joined the team on stage. I'm very humbled by the fact that uh, the second uh, longest serving member of this party, uh, bes beside only the Prime Minister, um, has come out publicly now to show his support for me. It means a lot to me, it means a lot to my campaign, it will give a good boost to my campaign and I believe that um, it's a having of things to come. No one is entitled to be the leader of the UDP. No one has the right to succession. The next leader of the UDP has to have humility and has to work arduously to build the trust and confidence of the majority of us. The next leader of the UDP must be on the ground, in the trenches, shoulder to shoulder with our soldiers and our generals, working hand in hand, not head in the clouds, foolishly convinced of some entitlement to lead as if ordained by some divine decree that ignores the majority of the United Democratic Party. Team Saldiva is not about one person. It is about all of us. We all have a voice. We all have a say. This is the type of leadership that we need to continue the progress. Inclusive, balanced, and just. Not malicious, vindictive, and victimizing and petty. Today, 
the soul of the UDP is at stake. We cannot afford to squander the unprecedented gains. And so this country yearns for a unifier. This country cannot deal with nobody who is petty and vindictive and personal and all of that. We need somebody, we need some energy to unify not only the sweetness of our party and the love that we have, but the entire country. And so without the shadow of a doubt, I tell John, you know, you know where I stand for. Because I say where I want. I get in a trouble for say where I want. But we, at this point in time in this country, we need somebody who can lead with that energy, with that spiritual vibes, to connect us. I feel very good. We have put in our work and I have the support of many of my colleagues. And this is the, this is the production. This is what happens when you have a, a majority of your colleagues with you. Undoubtedly, the crowd on Sunday was larger than Faber's crowd, but it's all symbolic, really. The decision to choose the next leader will follow 560 persons. Saldiva is confident that more than 300 would vote for him. It's a little bit premature to do the numbers, but I can imagine that with 22 um, constituency leaders um, uh, giving their, their commitment to Team Saldiva, that, that, that's around where we, we might be. We can add a few more from the councils and the town boards around the country, but it looks pretty good at this point. Is Patrick Farber's only hope to run a guerrilla campaign to snipe off the delegates? Well, uh, that, that, that might be his only hope, but I'm not too sure that that will work um, this time around. In 2016, Saldivar was defeated by Faber for the post of first deputy leader. So what's the difference this time around? All I can say is the last time it was about the deputy leadership, this time it's about the leadership. Reporting for News 5, Hippolyta Novello.